All right, we are back. This is Tech Math 1. We're looking at review for chapter 1314. And let's jump in. So number one, state the number of solutions. If there's parallel lines, there are no solutions. They're asking where do the lines cross? And if they're parallel, they're never gonna cross. So parallel lines, no solutions. If it's one line, that means it's one line right on top of another line. That's infinite solutions because every point on the line would be a solution. And then the most common is when you have two intersecting lines. And that's one solution. And that just basically means where do these, you know, where do two lines cross? It's at that point of intersection. And so that would be one solution. So no solutions for parallel lines, infinite solutions when it's the same line, and one solution when they're just intersecting lines. So this one they want us to graph it. So first you have to solve for y. And again, there's an upside and a downside to each method of solving. The upside to graphing is you literally get to see what's going on here. So look, I divide everything by negative two. I isolate y, I want y equals. So I subtract x from both sides, I get negative x plus five, and then I divide everything by negative two. So now look, we have y is equal to one half x minus 2.5. All right, this one much easier to solve, just minus three x from both sides. Remember that's an x, that's a one, you cannot put them together, they're unlike terms. So negative three x plus one. So now what we want to do is put these on a graph. And so we're going to use our calculators to graph the two lines. And then we'll use that to find the point of intersection, all right? So here we are with our graphing calculator. Voila. We're going to hit y equals, all right. Oh, I got to clear it out. So y equals. And now we're going to put in 0.5x. If you wanted to do 1x divided by 2, you could. That's the same. And then um, minus 2.5. And then hit enter. And then it pops you down to the next line, all right? And so now on the next line, I want to focus, focus, there it is. Um, we want negative 3x. So remember the negatives down here, negative 3x. And then plus 1. All right. Let me get you focused in on there. Okay. And now you just hit graph. And it puts that line on, and it puts that line on. And now uh, we want to know where they cross. So here's what we do. We hit second, the yellow button, and then now look really carefully. That says calculate. We want it. So second trace. And now it says value, zero, minimum, maximum, intersect. We want the intersect. Go down to intersect, and then hit enter. Now it asks you questions. It says, hey... Is this the first curve you want? And you just hit enter. And it says, that's the second curve you want. You just hit enter. And then it says, take a guess. And I usually don't, but you can. If you want to move it around with the, the right and the left click, you can put it real close to where it crosses. And then hit enter. I usually just hit enter. It'll find it. And there is our answer. One, comma, negative two. So, the upside of doing it this way, you literally get to see where the two lines cross, all right? So you get a nice little picture of what's going on. You have that line crossing this line. And there's the point of intersection was x was equal to um, did I have that? 
down as x is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 2. So 1, negative 2 is the point of intersection. All right. Let's do the next one. Number three, it says, okay, use substitution. <clears throat> so we're going to use algebra to solve instead of graphing. Again, the downside of graphing is you have to solve it for y, which was a little involved in this first one. The second one wasn't bad, but a little more involved and, you know, steps to put it in. But the upside is you literally get to see what's going on. You're finding where two lines cross. Algebraically, it's a little less tedious with the work, but you don't get to see what's going on. You're going to... You're going to just um, kind of see the outcome. And so you have to understand what you're finding. When you're solving a system of linear equations, that's you're finding where two lines cross. So look, it says 4x plus 3y equals 22, and y equals 5x plus 1. So what you're going to do is you're going to write out 4x plus 3 mm, equals 22. So I wrote that out, but I'm going to take this 5x plus 1, and I'm going to sub it in where y was in the top equation. Now, why would I do such a thing? Well, if you're solving it algebraically and you've got two variables, you've got to get it tricked out to be one variable. Otherwise, you can't solve without a graph. All right, and we're trying to not graph, we're doing it algebraically. So that means I either have to like add straight down and get something to cancel off or substitute, because now look, there's only x's and numbers, and now I can solve this. Don't forget the distributive property, 15x plus three, not one, three. As you multiply three times five, I've got 15x. Three times one is three. Combine the like terms. Isolate the variable. That means get 1x all by itself. So we get 19x equal to 19. I subtracted 3 from both sides of the equation. That zapped that 3 and it popped up over there as a negative. And then divide by 19. So x is equal to 1. And now you take that and sub it back in. So when you do the substitution method, you actually do it twice. careful with these. You see that big plus sign? And this is 5 times 1, which is 5. So 5 plus 1 then is 6. So that's our answer. 1 comma 6. All right. Okay, let's look at the next one. Use the addition method. All right. And then number 5 is use the addition method. And number 6 is use the addition method. So let's take a look at that. Number six is a real tough one, too. So number four is 5x plus 2y equals 4, and 3x minus 2y equals 28. I add straight down, and I get the y's to cancel that way. So instead of doing the substitution method where I put them in and something went away, I'm going to add straight down and this is going to be 8x, but that gets zapped. So now we just have x's and numbers. Divide by 8, x is equal to 4. And then take that 4 and sub it into either equation, whichever one looks easier. I'm going to put it in the top. 2i equals 4. 20 plus 2i equals 4, move the 20 over, 2i equals negative 16, divide by 2, y is equal to negative 8. So 4 comma negative 8 is where those two cross. Number 5 is a similar problem, but it is a tiny bit harder in that. You have to either get rid of the x or get rid of the y. This one was a no-brainer. We got rid of the y because we had opposite y's. You know, they were ready to go. We just added straight down and they went away. Here, if I add straight down, nothing goes away. 
So before I add, I'm going to have to multiply by a number. So we're going to go on a vision quest here. I decided, um, well, I could get rid of X or Y, but if I do Y, I have to make it a 12 and a negative 12. If I do X, this is already a 2X. I can leave it 2X, but I want to make this top one negative 2X. Now, how do I change a negative 1X into a negative 2X? Well, I multiply everything by 2. And here's the thing. I had to multiply that to get the negative 2x that I wanted to cancel that. But the rest of them also have to be multiplied. It's like collateral damage. Plus 8y equals 14. This one, minus 3y equals negative 9. I didn't change a thing on that one. I wrote it exactly as it is. Now when I add straight down, just like that one, the x's die. I got 5y equals... Um, 5 divided by 5, y is equal to 1, take that 1, sub it back into either equation, I think I'm going to put it into this one, 2x minus 3 times 1 equals negative 9, so 2x minus 3 equals negative 9, add 3, 2x equals negative 6, divide by 2, x is equal to negative 3. All right, so negative 3 and 1. So that wasn't bad. This next one is bad. This is number 6. You'd be well off to do this with a matrix and use reduced row echelon form, but they specifically told us to use the addition method for this. So this is going to be one big mamba jamba of an addition method. So here, let me show you how we're going to do this one. Um, x plus 4y minus z equals 4. 2x minus 3y plus 4z equals 3. Negative x plus y plus 2z equals 2. So what I want to do, I'm going to label these. I'm going to call this circle 1, I'm going to call this circle 2, I'm going to call this circle 3, all right? And now I'll telegraph what I'm going to do and why I'm going to do it. I'm going to take 2, negative 2, times circle 1. So I'm going to take negative 2 times everything in this line, and I'm going to add it to circle 2 that I'm not going to do anything to. What is that going to result in? That's going to result in me getting rid of the x's. So the x's are going to be gone when I execute this plan. So the plan is take negative 2 times everything there. So negative 2x, negative 8y, positive 2z equals negative 8. A negative 2 times that, a negative 2 times that, a negative 2 times that, and a negative 2 times that. It gives me that. 2, I'm leaving alone. So see what happens. When I add straight down with this plan, I add straight down, the x's die, I get negative 11y, I get plus 6z, and negative 5. All right? So let's put a pin in that one. Let's play with two and three now. I played with one and two, I got rid of the x's. I'm gonna play with two and three. I'm gonna get rid of the x's again. So I'm gonna leave two alone, and I'm gonna add it to two times circle three. Why would I take two times this whole thing? Well, this is a two x, and this is a negative one, and if I multiply that by two, it'll be a negative two, and then those x's will go away. So here goes, the 2x minus 3y plus 4z equals 3 stays exactly as it is, but this third one, I'm going to multiply everything by a 2. So I get negative 2x, see, the x's are going to die, 2 times that is 2y, 2 times that is 4z, 2 times that is 4. I add those straight down, x's die, negative 1y, 
plus 8z equals 7. All right, now look at what I have. After all of that screwing around, I've got negative 11y plus 6z equals negative 5, and I've got negative 1y plus 8z equals 7. Now it looks like the problem I just did before, just like number 5, where I've got two, just two variables, right? And I want to do the same thing. This time I'm going to multiply the bottom by negative 11. So I'm going to leave this one alone. Negative 11y plus 6z equals negative 5. But this one, I'm going to multiply by negative 11. And look what's going to happen. Negative 11 times negative 1 is positive 11y. Negative 11 times 8z is negative 88z. And negative 11 times 7 is negative 77. I add straight down. The y's die. Oof. I get negative 82z equals negative 82. I divide by negative 82, and z is equal to 1. All right. Now, I'm not done, unfortunately. I got 1. I'm going to take that 1 answer. I'm going to put it back in to either one of these. Uh, this one looks easier, so I'll go negative 1y. 8 times 1 equals 7. So I took that, plugged it in. So negative 1y plus 8 equals 7. Move the 8 to the other side. Negative 1y equals negative 1. Divide by negative 1. y equals 1. So now I got z and I got y. I still need x. So I can put it into this one or this one or this one. I'm going to go into that top one. So x plus 4 times 1 minus 1 equals 4. x plus 4 minus 1 equals 4. x plus 3 equals 4. Subtract 3 to isolate the variable, get x all by itself. And there we go. x equals 1, y equals 1, z equals 1. All right. I'm going to show you a shortcut on how to do that with a matrix, and it's going to be a lot, lot, lot easier. Alrighty. Okay.